Welcome to my three-minute presentation on the effects of Triticum polonicum integration to hexaploid wheat. This is Triticum polonicum, and it's famous for its very long glooms, as you can see here. Recently, Nikolai from our lab was able to show that the underlying causal mutation for this elongated gloom phenotype is, an is a rearrangement of intron 1 in BRT2, a known flowering gene. He created a lot of genetic materials, such as near isogenic lines and transgenics for this VRT2 polonicum um, allele, which allowed us to study in depth the phenotypic effects of its introgression. Over six environments, we found that introgression of triticum polonicum VRT2 increases grain lengths by 5%, which also translates to an increase in 1,000 grain weight. However, it also affects, for example, spike length and um, plant height. And all of this translates to an increase in hectoliter weight, which is the amount of seed you can store in a given unit, which is really good for transport. However, we also found that there's no significant increase in yield by the introgression. So why could that be? Well, taking a closer look at the spike of um, the neoisogenic lines, we found that the number of rudimentary basal spikelets is increased by one or two. Um, and here you can see in more detail that spikelet fertility is always low at the base in the wild type. However, it increases very rapidly from the first to the second to the third basal spikelet, and this fails to happen in polonicum. However, the apical spikelets are not affected in polonicum, so we really wanted to understand now what's special about these rudimentary basal spikelets. Looking at the development of the spike, we can see that upon floral transition, spikelet primordia are developed and they are actually biggest developed at the base. However, in this gloom primordium stage where the spikelets start to grow out and differentiate, the basal spikelets are already falling behind and their development throughout um, upon to maturity is then uh, following this trend where basal spikelets are just falling behind. And that's really interesting because Nikolai and his work also showed that uh, anomaly, as shown here in blue in the wild type, VRT2 expression would be down-regulated up, upon this floral transition and then stay very low, while in polonicum this down-regulation seems to fail and um, the expression, expression of VRT2 is still high in the double ridge and gloom primordium stage. But why would that affect basal spikelets differentially to central spikelets? Well, I took a look at the apical, basal, and peduncle section individually by dividing the spikelet primordia further. And what I found was that expression was actually naturally always higher in the base than in apical sections. And in polonicum, this effect has even increased. So we're now hypothesizing that this higher expression of VRT2 in the base is what is holding back floral transition. And this is really um, kind of key for my future research, where I would like to take a focus on rudimentary basal spikelets. And I would really like to understand how spikelets at the base can develop different to central ones, even though they're all in the same plant. And uh, for that, I'm studying the development, I'm studying the genetics that control this development, and now also the environmental effects that might uh, play a role in rudimentary basal spikelet development. So if you have ever noticed this phenotype anywhere specifically, please do get in contact. For that, I would really like to acknowledge all um, my collaborators and my supervisors. I'd like to thank all the funding and especially also give a thank to the BGRI for this opportunity to talk here today, as well as all the other opportunities they provide the wheat community with.